Welcome back to Sailing Ruby Rose from the Saigon Shipyard. It's about the 20th of April and today I'm doing two things. Number one, as always, supernatural, hull number one. What I'm doing with hull number one today is I've just had a meeting with James. He's walked me through and taught me through the changes that they are making to supernatural. A lot of those are actually already in play. Big changes to the master cabin, big changes to the nav desk. And a lot of this will then, well, in fact, all of this will then be implemented into Ruby Rose 2, hull number two. I then want to talk to you all about some, just some help I need from you guys in the layout of certain parts of our boat, which actually I don't really know what is best, but keep watching this. I hope it's going to be interesting for you. Let's just take a quick zip on board hole number one and have a look to see exactly what's being changed there. And uh, I'll talk you through all that and the reasons why it's being done as I walk through. Okay, this is just the nav desk has all now been redone in gray and it looks a lot better. The other things are that this panel is now fully recessed. If you compare this with the old one, this unit wasn't recessed. And it's because when we did the test sail, there is a lot of ambient light here. So this will have gray panels. So they've completely remade this. It looks a lot better. It looks much, 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 much better. They've changed all this as well. So this whole thing is now different. They've actually added much wider steps down here. But now we have something which is far more usable, doesn't catch your hips. That is clearly the template for the foot of the bed. And you can see that it's far, far more rounded there. So they've got templates here now for these fiddles that we talked about. So this is you know, where the handrails are going to be. Mirrors now added. Good to see. There's also going to be some modifications to this to, I believe, make it deeper to take books. So I just had a, a long chat with James, who literally is trying to juggle six or seven balls. James is the production manager for the 1370, just to discuss what is actually being done to the boat and the modifications that are being implemented at the moment. I've already shown you the bed. The bed is being shortened and they have basically made it, not shortened, it mean, it's been made narrower and they have decided to, to kind of make the foot of the bed more curved so that it is easy to get in and out of. Regarding the galley, uh, things that they're changing to the galley, one thing that they have done is that they have decided that there is not enough storage under the hob. Obviously there was a very high-end design meeting. I did ask James if we were allowed to talk about this on camera and he's like, of course. So this cupboard is going to communicate with the galley now. So we will have a cupboard or access more galley storage just down there. Something that's hatch washed really well, and I'm going to pull this out because this is one of our proudest things. Look down there. That is our little chute to the sea. Very good. The tea bags and vomiting. Moving down here, this is all now grey as opposed to black. This is now recessed, and over the coming weeks, I'm going to ask for our patrons help in getting the whole design for this done because we have a lot of instruments to put here and that needs to be done in a way which is ergonomic and beautiful at the same time. A bit like Teresa. Moving into here, we're not gonna show you the workshop because our workshop is very, 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 very different. And we wanna kind of have that as a bit of a surprise for you. They've obviously got everything for the handrails here. Things that they're sorting out here, headlining panels are being changed rather than these. Now, this was a very controversial thing and I, I am not, I was not overly keen on the look of these. I don't know what your thoughts are. I don't really like the cutaways. We're now having five very, very big continuous panels with the lights embedded in the headlining. I think it's a much cleaner solution and I like it. And now after hole one, the beautiful Ruby Rose 2. In the headlining panels that you saw in hole one, I want to show you the whole process by just showing you the size of those that they've all changed them now. They're no longer multiple panels. There's far cleaner and these will all be fabric covered and they're also thinner. So you will find that there's weight saving to be had there. I'm going to actually show you the shot. We've had a few people complain on the internet that my face happens to be over too many videos. Why not more B-roll? What's on with your face? I love my face. My mother loves my face and I believe Teresa does as well. Anyway, Let's show you these headlining panels and then keep the walkthrough going. So again, just bringing you up to date with the walkthrough of the master cabin. 
The carpenter is just going to bring all his stuff in here. So you can actually see this probably for the last time that you're going to see it without any woodwork in place. This is going to be a workstation. So something that you do need to appreciate that it's not going to be the same as whole one. And with our walk-in wardrobe, we are having uh, a door here. I, I, I really do need a door just so that this becomes far more uh, usable storage that we can actually keep everything stowed effectively at sea. As I keep saying, this is going to be a blue water cruiser for us. So this is complete bar the electrics, but they need the carbons to get in and get this all sorted out. So that is all but done. And so it's time for a tour of Ruby Rose 2 and how she is up to date today. Apologies for all the blue. This is all just, as you know, protective layer. But let us look first. This is the barbecue area where we are going to have that beautiful barbecue. So again, it gives you a, a keen kind of view of how big that barbecue is. And we've got some shots of that when it was dry fitted. So I'm sure they will get overlaid now for you to see. As we swing round, I know it looks as if there's a lot of work to do here, but something you do need to be aware of is that all the furniture has actually been pre-made and they are just addressing all the, uh, the the items on the list that were found on the test sale on Hull 1 Supernatural, and then they're gonna implement those all the way down the range. So everything is just waiting to be fitted, but obviously there is a, a hold up while they uh, just continue with Supernatural. Moving into the saloon, obviously the trifold door, again, that has been made and that is again waiting to be fitted. So moving in, the electronics all the electronics for the master vault battery system are in place that 24 volt system that's all again all been fitted under the nav station and the galley has been templated as well so that's another thing to be aware of the Korean people have come in to template for that and we've given them specific instructions as to you know the lips that we want and not having ridges on the on the drainer and as we swing around again, this is where the saloon will be. But just to clarify, the upholstery has also been done. It is literally just waiting for these last bits to be kind of complete. We are having the vinyl floor matting down. So again, this whole blue and white area, which looks like a builder site, will be very, very clean. The teak covered vinyl matting to go on the floor. We have... Um, a kind of a grey upholstery for the outside, a grey upholstery for the inside and then that's going to be offset with the white, the grey, the blinds and again this area, I know it's all blue, is completely grey so again that two-tone uh, nav desk that you saw on hull one and there's a full BNG system going here with a whole Star Trek Enterprise array of electronics. Again, the flooring has not been put in and they are waiting for the final furniture to go in before the flooring. As soon as the furniture goes in, the flooring will be in and I believe that this week, it is the 16th of May today, when I go back to the factory tomorrow, this will all be done. That is a quick trip around Ruby Rose 2. Hope you enjoyed it. And then I want to talk to you about the fancy stuff. So the fancy stuff actually at this point is to do with, well, this is kind of like the biggest first world problem I think I've ever come to you with. And it's to do with the placement of our instruments and also the placement of uh, our speakers. I don't actually know what to do. I'm a pretty big audiophile, but I want to, I mean, uh, yeah, ask for some help. James has told me to unbox all the bits and show you and let you help me with. So if any of you have like knowledge about stereos and hi-fi, you can uh, let me know. Now, what I'm gonna say to you is we have six speakers and a subwoofer to install. I was thinking about two up here, two in there and two on the front deck that are zoned with the subwoofer in a locker. But I'm worried about the waterproof nature of these speakers. So again, what we've got here on the foredeck of the boat is obviously this huge area where we can sit. And I'm kind of thinking about getting a couple of speakers just recessed in here, just down, down in this part here. But there is going to be a lot of water over this deck and I kind of worry about it. Also, we're cutting holes in the deck. So uh, let me just show you where I'm thinking. So this is obviously a whole big seating area. I was thinking of putting one speaker in down here and then another one across in here if possible. And then as I walk back through the boat, we're talking about having another speaker recess there, another one there. The subwoofer is gonna go into here. And then we've got two more, one there and one there. So six speakers, all zonable. Another development that I really do wanna show you is that there's now our solar panels are in place, all ready to be installed. 
there are teams of electricians here. The electricians are getting everything done on their part. Uh, the carpenters are getting their bits done. So it's now all the teams coming together. As I said, this is the 20, the 20 something of April, 20th of April. And this boat is going to be launched in about six to seven weeks. Very, very interesting. Okay. Oh, a welcome, a welcome break from, from being out there in essentially, this is one of the hottest Aprils Southeast Asia has ever had. I read a report this morning to say that, you know, temperatures in Cambodia are hitting 44, 45 degrees. It's insanely hot here. Anyway, I should put on my nerd bins. I want some help from, from you lovely people. Okay, stereo placement. So this is our head unit. Um, we have not, we're not sponsored by Fusion in any way. It's just, um, just showing you what we've got. So we've got a head unit there, which is the Apollo system. Now this is zonable. So we have a zonable head unit. That is important because we then have speakers, these shallow mount. These shallow mounts are the internal ones. So these are for indoors. I was very, very specific. I wanted white facing ones. And James did say to me, I can pull all this out. So here, these are the ceiling mounted ones. Nice, small driver, rated a hundred watts peak. These grills are actually really nice. Are they fabric coated or metal coated? Oh, they're fabric coated. So those are the internal speakers. They actually look really nice. I'm thinking of getting those mounted on a bulkhead now. These are clearly bigger. Six and a half inch white metal grills. And we have four of these. Again, so we have six and a half inch drivers there. I'm thinking about putting these, just putting them up into the headlining of the the cockpit nice so this if you have any questions or suggestions about these let me know because this placement is being decided by seawind and i and james and you lot over the coming days and then finally we have the uh the subwoofer 10 inch to go with the two six and a halves okay this has got some real weight to it don't know who makes the drivers but fusion we had a fusion system in our old in our old boat. So this to take the base response. So again, this is gonna be in a locker. Base is non-directional. That is going to be the subwoofer. So what do you think about that? Let us know what you think about speaker placement. We've kind of like going round and round on this. Two at the back, two inside, two at the front, and a subwoofer. Leave us your comments down below. I'll be back next week. See you all then. Take care, goodbye.